You guys, today I wanna to talk to you about one of the biggest initial obstacles that we experience as we dress better. And to be honest, it's something that isn't just present as we start to dress better. And to be even more honest, there's some real cognitive dissonance that goes on between these two different ways that we kind of think about this. It's the idea of, well, what are other people going to think of me as I start to improve my style? Now, I can almost guarantee that as I said, what are other people gonna think of me? You had one script running in your head that said, what other people think of you doesn't matter. The only opinion that matters is yours. You should dance like nobody's watching. You do you. All the other platitudes that we hear about how the only person to whom we should be accountable when it comes to anything is ourselves because it's all relative and it's only the individual that matters and you are a special snowflake. Now at the same time, we also hear the script of, well, everybody in the world is equally valuable and we are one big global community and everybody matters, therefore everybody's opinion matters because you don't wanna hurt or offend anybody. And I mean, talk about like Orwellian doublespeak, the only person whose opinion matters is mine, but everybody is equally valuable and everybody matters just as much as I do. That doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't matter if you think that that is intentional, that there's somebody or some force out there that is designing this cognitive dissonance to create this disharmony and this kind of ennui and this anxiety about what people's opinions really are and why they matter or if they should matter. Or if you just think that it's kind of a natural outflow of where we've gone as a society, especially when it comes to the often conflicting ideas of traditional Americanism and Western culture versus globalism and what stems from that. Doesn't matter what you think the intentions or the, the fountain of that dissonance is, the dissonance is there. And from my own experience and my own perspective, there's really only one way to get over that. Now, I'm happy to admit that this is just my own experience and my own perspective. I haven't heard anybody talk about this in this context besides myself. If you know of somebody who has, whether that's somebody who's currently doing it or somebody who's written something else that's related to this, please let me know. I would love to study more because this is just my own kind of ideas that are coming through on this. But the way that I've come to terms with this myself is going back to this idea that we talk about all the time on the channel and that is the idea of tribe. Because if you think about it, there are people in your life who they, they matter and their opinions of you should matter. Concepts like honor and loyalty cannot exist if other people's opinions of you don't matter. And so if you believe that no man is an island, if you believe that your ability to thrive is dependent on your ability to get along with other people, if you believe that there is benefit in some level of a collective, whether that's on the most basic unit of the nuclear family or something that's bigger like a community or a traditional tribe or something as big as a nation or even the globe. If you believe that other people matter, then you can't hold to the idea that nobody's opinion of you matters. Now at the same time, if you subscribe to the idea that we're limited in our ability to love and to respect and to empathize with and to care about other people, then you can't fathom the billions, not millions, billions of people in the world whom you will never meet and who live and die and do good things and do bad things and in no way does it directly impact your life and in no way can you actually fathom that and comprehend it from your own perspective. So you've got these two things, this, this contrast between individualism and collectivism, and they're not mutually exclusive. The only reason that they appear to be mutually exclusive is because we operate on these two extremes. We operate on everybody matters or nobody matters, when the reality is, is some people matter and some people's opinion of you should matter. Now that's obviously applicable to way more than just some people's opinion of you when it comes to improving your style, but that's the way it works with everything. You know whose opinion matters to me? My family's, my wife, my kids, her family, the people with whom I interact on a day-to-day -day basis, the men that are part of 
the Menfluential crew, the guys who were part of Beckett and Rob, the people, honestly, who have earned the right for their opinion to matter. And ultimately for me, that's what the crux of this comes down to, is we too freely give people the right for their opinion to matter. You know what? Some random dude at the airport or some person on the other side of the world or even somebody who believes in God the same way that I do, has the same skin color, lives in the same state, and has all these other things that should be or traditionally are or have been markers of loyalty and in-group status, if that person isn't actually improving my life, if we are not sharing a common goal and a common mission, if we're not working together to accomplish something, then he hasn't earned the right for his opinion to matter. Now, does that mean that I have animosity for him? That I want to exploit him or take advantage of him? Of course not. That's going back to this idea of a crazy big extreme where, well, since he doesn't matter a lot, he doesn't matter at all, and therefore I'm morally justified and completely exploiting him and taking advantage of him in any way that I can. I don't believe that. I don't believe that you believe that. But the benefit exists somewhere here in the middle. And so if you can start to think about it this way, and my own experience has been is that it takes practice to think about it this way, but really start to think about who the people are in your life who have earned the right for their opinion to matter, and you're loyal to those people for any of the reasons that you are loyal, then yes, as you start dressing better, as you start changing your style, as you start improving your presence, as you do anything else in your life, think about how it impacts them and then obviously how that in turn is going to impact you. But if they are not people who have a shared goal, a shared commonality, you are not part of a tribe with a mutual mission, then don't give them that right. Their opinion doesn't matter. It doesn't. They haven't earned the right for it to do that. So if you think about it as a finite thing, your concern for the opinions of other people. Let's say you only have, I don't know, a hundred units of those, and you can only give them to a hundred people, then obviously you are going to be much more specific in who those hundred people are. I think unfortunately what we as a society have done is we've diluted it. So it's not a hundred units, but it's a million or a billion units, but each one of those units is a lot smaller, but in turn ends up feeling overwhelmingly greater because everybody's opinion matters. As you're walking down the street, everybody's opinion matters and it doesn't need to be that way. So start to practice that and to be honest, Dressing more intentionally, dressing better is a really good way to start practicing that because as you start to improve yourself, you will find people who do not share your mission are going to resent you. They will think negatively of you. They will try to cut you back down to where they are because you are demonstrating their own mediocrity and their lack of ambitions to themselves. And it's a great way for you to be able to recognize, you know what? We don't share a mission because this person prioritizes comfort and I prioritize growth. And so as a result, since we have different missions, that person no longer matters, or at least he doesn't matter any more than he actually has the right to matter. Maybe it's your boss, maybe it's a coworker, and so to some extent, they matter, but they don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Their opinion, they haven't earned the right for it to matter. So I wanna know what you think. Is this something that you can start to train yourself to interact with the world this way? What are potential pitfalls that you can find as you start to do it? And have you already started to do this yourself? Now, if you're interested in better understanding how you can take thought processes like this to improve your style, go check out this page right here. I'm in the process of bringing on new coaching clients. And if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, this is the place to figure out if we're a good fit for each other. If you wanna watch more videos, more free content about concepts like this, go watch this video here. And as always, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of what I brought up in this video. Leave it a like, subscribe down below, and I will talk to you guys on the next one.